Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome to another episode in the Game Dev Toolbox. A look at the essential tools for game developers, be it for artists, programmers, designers, writers, audio guys, you name it. And today we're looking at what is mostly a programmer tool, but we'll touch the whole team, and that is Git and GitHub. Now, Git is a version control software, and it is a, both a program a server and a standard. So it's sort of like FTP. With FTP, you have FTP clients and you have FTP servers, but we can call, call the entire thing FTP. Well, Git works the same way. Git is a virtual control standard, whereas GitHub is one of, and probably the most popular implementation of Git, and the most popular version and control software in the cloud that there is. Now, there were all kinds of these when you started out. There was um, SourceForge, Google Code, um, GitHub, of course, and a bunch of others. And over time, a lot of them have kind of gone away or shrunk back of importance, and GitHub has become more and more important every day. So that's why I'm actually going to cover it as well. But but GitHub is really just a cloud implementation of the Git standard. Now, uh, Git itself, I guess it's most easily likened to a condom. Now, it may not be the greatest thing in the world to deal with. It may not be the funnest thing to set up, but when it saves your ass, you're going to really appreciate it. And that's where GitHub comes in or Git comes in. Git basically creates um, versioned um, you send, you basically pass in directory full of files and it version controls them. And a lot of times in the ideal setup here is that you're using your Git server, uh, you create a local repository and then a remote one. So you're backing it up off site. And what it does is it creates revision histories of all of the files as you make changes. So you can go back in time and undo changes. Uh, if you have a team working on stuff, each person does check-ins and you can easily see a nice revision history of all of what they've done. Um, now, this does have some downsides. We'll get back to that in a second. Now, here is GitHub. Now, as I said, GitHub is one implementation of Git, and it's completely free to use for public repositories. Now, if you need to keep your code private, so if you're working on things by uh, yourself or with a small team and you don't want to share your code, that's when money comes into the equation. Uh, but you can set up completely free. Here is my personal, incredibly uh, ignored GitHub repository. And I've just got a couple things up here. And then I created another one called Game From Scratch that's somewhere else. But this is just a way for me to share some code. For example, I did um, a phaser tutorial series and I made all of the phaser code available in it, available in this repository right here. So what I can do now is I can go into this repository and just grab the Git address here. So the GitHub address and then Git I've installed, and I don't even know which version I installed to be honest, but I installed one of the clients for Windows. Uh, there's a bunch of options. You go to um, git.com or I think it's git.com. But anyways, you just search for, I think it's SCM Git that I installed, but pick a client. You can install it in your command line or there's visual clients available. So the clients are pretty um, universal in their capabilities, but there's dozens of them available. Um, but once you've got it installed, using Git is pretty simple. So if I'm going to download a file right now, just do Git clone and pass in the repository that I want to bring down. And what this will do is copy all of these files locally onto my machine. So, um, ooh, I should not have done that into my personal profile. All right, so it's going to create the um, repository in whatever directory you happen to currently be in, which in this case was by user. Oops. So we should see there is now phaser TypeScript here, like so. So this is now a local copy of this. So this is the Git repository remote. remote. This is it, uh, my local version. Now I can go ahead, I can make edits, I can make changes and everything under the sun here. And then I just do a git commit and then write about what my small changes was and it will sync it back up to the server. Or I can create a new branch, play with it, make changes as I want and then send them back up. And the biggest thing is if you have uh, a conflict, so you have two or three players, uh, people all making changes, then you can do merge requests. So you can change in two people's changes to the code and make sure that everything works right. And everything is stored locally in um, Git directory. So you, you basically, to create a new repository, just pick a directory, run the Git command, and it creates a new hidden folder in the root of that directory. And that's essentially how everything works. Now, Git actually has a kind of a funny history. Git was created by Linus Torvald and his team. And they used to use a program called Bitbucket for doing, um, Linus Torvald is the guy that made Linux or the guy that made the Linux kernel. And for the collaboration of it, they used Bitbucket 
as an early source version. And then the license on Bitbucket changed slightly. So he said, to hell with this, we're going to create our own. So he started to create his own standard, which is ultimately what became Git. Now, the design method behind Git was basically anything that CVS does, let's do it the opposite way. And CVS is the, or was the um, prominent version control system of the day. So the design system was, if in doubt, do the opposite of what CVS did. And that was the design methodology under which Git was made. Now, uh, Git has become so ubiquitous that it is basically built into all of your tools. For example, here I am in a WebStorm, my personal choice for HTML5 development. This is made by um, um, Net, uh, JetBrains, which is the makers of IntelliJ. I've actually done a video on this one if you're interested. I'll link it down below. But WebStorm is one of many available IDEs that actually have um, GitHub integration in it. And so I can come right in here and go to version control, or DCS for version control system, check out, and then go to GitHub. And I already gave it my GitHub uh, credential, so it's going directly to my repository, but I can put in someone else's here as well. And you'll see I have the various ones hooked up under my account. So go here, there's the phaser and TypeScript I just grabbed before, and I can now clone in that repository. So the GitHub stuff, the, 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 um, the functionality, or the, sorry, the Git functionality is basically built in now. So yeah, go ahead and open that guy up. So it is complete and utterly built into just about any tool you want to work with these days. Uh, Visual Studio has integration. Um, Eclipse has integration. I'm not sure about Xcode. Xcode kind of sucks, so it may or may not. But most modern tools will actually have Git built in. So it's even getting to the point where you don't even need to learn the commands. You don't even know what um, you use to create a new uh, archive or to check things out or to make merge requests, etc. because it's just done for you. If I go ahead and make a change here, it will say, okay, would you like to sync it up? If there's conflicts, uh, like you say here, it's saying, uh, would you like to add a root? So I say, yep, let's add that root in. We can configure it and it's all done in the tools now. So Git has become that key to the world. Now, I'm talking to game developers specifically right now, and here's where GitHub kind of stinks, at least by its default install, is it works really well with small files. So source code files work wonderfully because it creates multiple versions as you go, and it likes to have the entire repository local. So if you have 100 megs of source code for your project, not a big deal, because you got 100 megs of files. So generally, you only you know, make small changes, and the changes in a source code file can normally be captured in a number of bytes. So a revision between two versions might take up 50 bytes, 60 bytes. But when you start bringing binary data in, and there's the thing, Git doesn't care what kind of information it's working on, and it'll do binary patches or binary diffs between things, but when you change a model, for example, uh, binary representation, generally it, it mucks up the whole file, not just a small bit like when you're changing text. So suddenly your repositories get huge. Now there are ways around this. Um, there are this big file support uh, as an option. There is shallow checkouts, etc. There are ways of making Git work better with uh, binary assets, but it's a fight. It is not made for it. And when it gets into the world of backing up game data, you might be better off working with something like Perforce, which is another option. Um, there's also Subversion out there. I think Perforce was basically the one that was created for dealing with assets, but it's also a commercial project, so there is a catch there. But if there is a weakness for GitHub, it is dealing with binary files, large binary files, such as textures and models, et cetera, or level data. So GitHub really shines when dealing with code and files that change infrequently, but if you have um, large binary assets that are changing a lot, it will make your life very complicated very fast. So look at that right up front. There are ways around it. There are ways to prevent checkout. Um, there are ways to have it so that each different person only gets different assets, but that is certainly a weakness there. So uh, this is Git and GitHub. Truth of the matter is, this is something that you should be using regardless if you're a single person or a team of 100 or a team of 1,000 potentially or working on a large collaborative project. Now, true confession, I rarely use it. I work on projects pretty much by myself, and I should. Uh, I use the poor man's version control, which is also known as Dropbox. And people tell you not to, but reality is, you know what, Dropbox does 85%, 95% of what I need. Uh, it's version controlling has saved my ass when I screwed things up, and it pretty much works for me. So 
If you're by yourself and you gotta do something and this isn't appealing to you, I don't know, just use Dropbox like I do. But if you're like looking for the real way of doing things, you should really have version control setting up. And for a lot of cases, especially for working with source code, Git is a very good choice. If you're working a lot with assets, perhaps you should check out Perforce, which I may cover in the near future. So that's it. Uh, that is Git and GitHub. Hope you enjoyed that. See you all later. Bye.